You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents the first radio performance of Franz Werfel's epic story, The Song of Bernadette, starring Vincent Price, Lee J. Cobb, and introducing a rising young actress in the role of Bernadette, Vanessa Brown. <laughs> Each week at this time, Frigidaire brings you direct from Hollywood, radio versions of the finest motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Today, Hollywood Star Time presents Hollywood's newest discovery, Vanessa Brown, in the song of Bernadette. Vincent Price, currently appearing in the 20th Century Fox picture Dragonwick, will play his reverence, the Dean of Lourdes. Lee J. Cobb, soon to be seen in Anna and the King of Siam, portrays Dr. Dozu. And Pedro de Torre Cordoba plays Father Formian. Today, you will also hear the magnificent musical score of the Song of Bernadette, composed by Alfred Newman, musical director of this program, and which in 1943 received the Motion Picture Academy Award. Now, in just a few moments, the song of Bernadette. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire, the greatest name in refrigeration, is made only by General Motors. And it is this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator today. The seven million Frigidaires built and sold are the best proof of Frigidaire's outstanding record of dependability, of lasting satisfaction. For back of every great refrigeration principle pioneered by Frigidaire, Back of every exciting new Frigidaire feature, back of every exclusive Frigidaire advantage, is one all-important purpose, to keep food good to eat. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember the record of millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. Today, Frigidaire will not interrupt this program for further product mention. Now, the song of Bernadette. <laughs> to those who believe in God, no explanation is necessary. To those who do not believe in God, no explanation is possible. This is the story of Bernadette Subiru, child of humility, daughter of poverty, living in squalor in a hut that had once been a jail. Why was it given to this humble child to be the vessel of the great events that were to befall her? We do not know. I am Dozu, doctor and scientist. I knew Bernadette Subiru. And far from being a religious girl, she was, in fact, almost painfully ignorant of the dogmas of her own faith, to the infinite displeasure of her teacher, Sister Bozou. Bernadette, never to have even heard of the Holy Trinity. Are you pert, indifferent, or only stupid? I'm stupid, Sister Bozou. You're pert. When his reverence, the Dean of Lourdes, comes to visit us, I shall inform him of your pertness. Yes, Sister Bozou. Now, from Bernadette's own testimony concerning the amazing happenings that began in Lourdes, France, in 1858. On February 11th, 1858, I, Bernadette Soubirou, was sent in company with my sister Marie to fetch firewood. While my sister crossed the river, I rested at a location known as Massabielle. Massabielle. As a doctor, I'm qualified to speak with scientific loathing of that reeking place called Massabielle, the city dump. 
full of refuse and rubble. There, Bernadette waited at a dry rose bush at the base of an oak cliff. The bare rose bush rustled in the bleak February wind. The icy river murmured in the distance. Then, strangely, the wind fell, and with it a strange, deep silence. Marie! Marie! Do hurry back. It's getting dark. A leaden pallor overcomes the winter sky. Bernadette, what is this foolishness Marie tells me about your having seen a beautiful lady at Massabier? But a lady was there, Maman. She was there, and then she was gone. Nonsense, child. That's what I told her, Maman. But she was there, really and truly she was. She was all in white, and she wore a blue girdle, and she had a golden rose on each foot. She kept smiling and nodding at me. I've never seen anything so beautiful in all my life. That's enough now. Golden roses on her feet and feet. But, Mama... I'll have no more of it, Bernadette. All right, Mama. But she was there. She's been at Matabiel again. Antoine Nicolai had to carry her out and into his mother's house. She's there now. She looks dead. Mother of heaven, give me my shawl, Mary. Hurry. Bernadette, Bernadette, are you all right? She's all right now, Madame Stabilo. Antoine and I gave her some warm milk at once. I'm all right, Maman. Really. What happened? The lady was there again today. She spoke to me. Spoke to you? She said, Will you do me the grace of coming here each day for 15 days? And then she added, I cannot promise to make you happy in this world. Only in the next. And to hear this, I ran through the streets like a mad woman. Come home with me, Benedict. You'll be the lucky stock of Lord. Come, child. Mother, as long as I live, never will I see anything as beautiful as the face of that girl as she lay there at Massabiel. Will not not even touch a being like that. Dr. Dozier. Your Excellency. Monsieur Dutour. Yes, Your Excellency. As your mayor, I call upon your civic consciences. The girl, Bernadette, is making a laughing stock of Lourdes. The world will scoff at a town where spooks perform their medieval antics in caverns. Dutour. Yes, Your Excellency. You're the imperial prosecutor. Do something about it. Oh, I should like to, but the girl goes to Massabiel, she kneels and says her rosary and goes home again. Is that unlawful? But the girl is mad. Oh, she's a religious fanatic. Uh, today I went to Marcel Biel and stood among her followers. Later I spoke to her, studied her closely. She's neither mad nor a religious fanatic. Did you see anything in the niche? No. Didn't the crowd laugh at her? No. There was something about her that precluded laughter. I say this is a matter for the church, not the civil authorities. The dean of Lourdes insists that it is not a matter of the church. Well, the Dean of Lourdes is going to have to deal with Bernadette herself today. Uh, doctor, what's that you say? The girl says that the lady gave her a message to take to the Dean. Well, gentlemen, the guards are with us at last. <laughs> Perhaps now the church will have to take a stand in the matter whether it wants to or not. <laughs> I see, Bernadette. So your lady wants the church to build a chapel at Master Biel. Yes, Your Reverend. When you see your lady next, tell her this. Say that the Dean of Lords wants her to perform a little miracle. 
He would like her to make the wild rose bush at the grotto bloom now, this last week in February. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I'll tell her. Good day, Your Reverend. I, Dr. Dozu, was among the great crowd that watched and waited as Bernadette kneeled in the cold rubble of Massa Biel and requested a small miracle. In the winter twilight, the girl's face was aglow with adoration and ecstasy. Suddenly, she pressed her lips against the cold rock of the cliff, as though she kissed the feet of someone who stood there. What hysterical nonsense. Dr. Dozu, shall we leave? You may leave, Dutour, not I. Now what? What's she scurrying about like that for? Is she quite out of her senses? Bernadette seemed to be receiving some sort of directions from the invisible being on the ledge above her. And she seemed confused. Where? To the spring? She started to the river. Stopped again. No. Not the river. Spring. Oh. Oh, yes. Manifestly, there was no spring. But suddenly, the girl plunged to the ground and began digging furiously in the sharp soil with her bare hands, smearing her hands and face with damp earth, then trying to drink it. It was too much for me and for her poor mother. Benedict! Stop! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, Benedict, in heaven's name, come away. Come away. No, Mama. I must watch myself at the screen. She said... But there is no spring, my child. But there must be. The lady said so. Take her home and put her to bed, Mother. I'll come later. Come, Benedict. Come, my poor child. There is a spring. There must be. The lady said so. The lady said so. Bernadette says there is a spring. There is a spring. Hmm? And who are you? Antoine Niccolo. And uh, did you expect the rose bush to bloom? I believe in things, monsieur. One must. Yes. How different from Dutour, the imperial prosecutor. He believes in nothing. I don't care about Monsieur Dutour. I only care that Bernadette... Listen. What? Naturally, the river. No. The sound comes from the grotto. Look. Look. I looked. And yes. Yes. Live water snaking swiftly across the hard ground out of the shadow of the low cliff. Water bubbling and gushing from the dry hole that Bernadette had scratched out of the hard earth with her bleeding hands. Water! There is a spring. Bernadette knew. Come back, all of you. The lady was right. There is a spring. Come back. A miracle. A miracle. I faced one of the unhappy realities of my medical practice. The infant son of Charles and Quasim Buho, hopelessly ill and crippled since birth, was dying. When I arrived, Father Pomian, a young priest, was already there. My child. Please, Madame Oho, it's best this way. A child would have dragged through life a hopeless cripple. No! I want my child to live. It's too late, Madame. No! The spring! Give him to me! There's still time for the spring! I won't let him die! I want my baby to live! She's heading for Master Biel! After her! My son, oh Lord, forgive him back to me. Take him. Forgive him. 
him back to me. Madame Duval! Madame! Take him. Oh, return him whole and strong into me, oh Lord. Oh God. Oh King. Madame Duval! Oh, stop! That freezing water! Sessions of the afflicted poured into Lourdes, converged on the spring of Massabiel, and many were killed, and all our science stood speechless for a reason or an explanation. But if the scientific world was disturbed, so was the world of his reverence, the Dean of Lourdes. Bernadette, I sent for you to come here to the parish house. I must speak most seriously with you. Yes, your reverence. The thing that you have caused to happen at Master Biel has made Lord the center of world excitement. It's not my doing, but the lady's. Yet if these indeed are true miracles, and I believe they are, then you, Bernadette, are the rarest of mortal beings. Come in. After you, Professor. Uh, thank you, monsieur. Your Reverence, I am Dutour, Imperial Prosecutor for His Majesty Napoleon III. I know that, Monsieur. And this is Professor Galatine. Professor? Mm -hmm. uh, briefly, Your Reverence, I am Professor of Psychiatry and Neurology at the University I am afraid, of... Professor, that you won't find Lord a fertile field for your studies. This girl is not a lunatic. If the child does not come with us willingly, we will invoke the law. Good. And when the police come, I'll say, Lord, well, your guns for your path lies over my dead body. Well... Naturally, Your Reverence, the state should regret so untimely a death for the eminent Dean of Lourdes. Come, Professor. Good evening, Your Reverence. Do, do they really think I'm mad? Oh, no, child. But they will never give you peace again. Once the lady said I could never be happy in this world. Only in the next. Bernadette... A bishop's committee of investigation has admitted the possibility that you were chosen by the powers above. Do you know what that means? No, Your Reverence, I don't. It means that for the rest of your life, the wisest and greatest men of the church will be watching every move that you make. Oh, no, no, I don't want that. It's no small thing, Bernadette. Heaven chose you. Now there is nothing for you to do but to choose heaven. I don't know what that means. The convent at Nevers is full of peace and quiet. It is a beautiful and lofty order. Your old school teacher, Sister Bonsou, is there now. Sister Bonsou? I know. She never believed in you or your lady. But now, she must believe. She must. So, farewell, Bernadette. Farewell to the world of young men and dancers marriage and children. For who plays with celestial fire may one day be a saint. Farewell to home and friends and to a young man who stops your carriage on the road to Nevers and hands you an armful of apple blossoms. Bernadette, there was something I had to tell you. Yes, Antoine. Well, my mother is getting old. We're used to each other. I'm 34 now, so I've decided never to take a wife. Uh, that's what I wanted to tell you. Farewell, Bernadette. Antoine, farewell. Bernadette works and studies at the convent at Nevers. No work is too repellent, no humility too great for her. She is a novice no longer, but now Sister Marie Bernard. And always, always she's under the cold, ascetic, doubting eyes of Mother Bozou, her old school teacher. Until one day Mother Bozou calls Sister Marie Bernard out of the courtyard to talk to her bitterly in her cell. 
Sister Mary Bernard, why do you limp? Oh, oh, it's nothing, Mother will do. It gains sympathy from the others. Is that it? Oh, no. Ten years ago, I doubted you. I have not changed. In our sacred history, the chosen ones have always been those who have suffered. Why then did God choose you? Why not me? I cannot answer that. I know what it is to suffer. Look into my eyes. They burn like the very fires of hell. Why? Because they need rest and sleep. My hands are gnarled. My body is wrecked and broken from serving God in humiliation. Yes, I have suffered. And if I have not seen the Blessed Virgin, how can you, who have never felt pain, dare to say that you have seen her? I don't know why I was chosen. You are a thousand times more worthy. If I only could find some evidence that you have suffered, maybe then I could believe. Maybe then these monsters of doubt and hate would stop consuming my very soul. For the love of God, sister, is there some proof? Perhaps. Perhaps I can help you. Here. If you will look at my leg, this is the reason that I must limp. You see? Mother of God. Oh, sister. Sister, forgive me. Forgive me, sister, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. I can't understand it, Mother. In addition to that large tumor on her knee, she has advanced tuberculosis of the bone. Go on, Dr. Dozen. She must have had this affliction for years. The constant pain and suffering from this disease is much too horrible to describe. And I wanted proof. I have my proof. May God pity me. There is not much more. Bernadette Soubirou sinks rapidly now. The processions at Massa Biel continue endlessly. And, miraculous to relate, one day one of the marchers is Dutour, the imperial prosecutor. Concerning this Dutour, I knew him to have an incurable cancer of the throat. There are many who tell me that they saw him that night kneel in the torchlights of Massa Biel. Pray, who knows? Now that you two is gone forever. Oh, God. A hungry cancer's feeding at my throat. And I'm alone. Alone and desolate because I have believed in nothing. I have loved no one. Not even myself. Pray for me, Bernadette. Chosen one. In God's sweet name, pray for me. Pray for me, Bernadette. Sister Mary Bernard. Bernadette. Yes, Mother Vuzu. His Reverence, the Dean of Lourdes, is here. We have been discussing a trip for you, Bernadette, to Massabiel, to the spring. That is not possible. And why not? The spring is not for me. The lady said, I cannot promise you happiness in this world, only in the next. Spring is not for me. But my dear sister, I, I I only wish to see the lady once more before I die. I was asleep, but my heart waked. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. The lady, the lady is here. She's standing in the archway. She's holding out her hands to me. Dear lady, I love you. I love you. Your life.
Christ begin, Benedict. You are now in heaven and on earth. Behold, my beloved speaketh to me. Arise, make haste, my love, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. The winter now is past. The flowers appear on earth. Arise, my love. Arise and come away with me. Arise. 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 Thank you, Vanessa Brown, Vincent Price, Lee J. Cobb, and Pedro de Cordoba for your splendid performances. This radio adaptation of the Song of Bernadette, which came to you direct from Hollywood, was written by Milton Geiger with a musical score composed and conducted by Alfred Newman and choir supervised by Charles Henderson. The entire production was under the direction of Robert L. Redd. Vanessa Brown soon may be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Margie. Hollywood Star Time is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances, electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. <laughs> Next week, Hollywood Star Time presents Kidnapped, starring Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. and Roddy McDowell. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. Since daylight savings time goes into effect next Sunday in many sections of the country, be sure to check your local newspaper for the exact time that you may hear Frigidaire's Hollywood Star Time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.